you're seeing here is raised bed gardening. I think that's what it's called, but it's all the handiwork of Steve. He's, uh, I think he's done this single-handedly and been doing it for a while. Let's uh, visit with him and get an idea of uh, what he's got planted and kind of the philosophy behind why he planted it the way he did. What's happening, man? Uh, nothing much, just checking the garden. Uh, these raised beds that I, that I started doing was because really this, this location that I have my garden is, uh, is gets plenty of sun and it's convenient to me, but the, it had, didn't have very good dirt. So I, I liked the idea of raised beds and I started seeing some things that were called uh, Hugel culture. And it's a German word that means hill culture. And what they do is bury a lot of uh, some green logs and some half rotten logs to fill up a good bit of the bed and reduce the volume of potting soil and topsoil that you have to have. But it also um, aids in some of the micronutrients and things that a garden needs anyway by allowing these things to rot slowly. I also burned some of them off uh, so that there would be some charcoal in the garden, which also stores and has slow release of nutrients and moisture. So, you know, I just decided to try it this year and they, they seem like they're doing good. Uh, these smaller ones were kind of an afterthought, but I had some extra materials and stuff to do it. So these are uh, cucumbers in these beds. And uh, these were some cucumbers that I bought the, the plants to start with and they ended up being a little different type of cucumber that I that I really wanted or that I had last year but these are supposed to be bush cucumbers and uh, so I thought they might work good on these raised beds just those little red, round beds like this but they have basically the same principle they have some rotted wood down in the bottoms of them they have a lot of the wood chips that surround the sides of it to give it uh, aeration and drainage and also hold moisture and also rot in time and uh, there's wood chips inside in the bottom? Yeah, there's, there's wood chips. So the, the dirt itself is almost in a conical form. And the wood chips start out wide at the bottom and thin out to nothing all the way at the top. So it allows a lot of moisture to drain off. And with the, the clay content of the soil that we have here in Georgia, uh, drainage is more of a problem a lot of times than getting water. You can always water something, but you can't always get it to drain off after a heavy rain or something like that. And so far these have, these have done extremely well. Uh, I used, like I said, a lot of the wood chips that I got from a local tree guy that, that was chipping them off and just looking for a place to get rid of them. So I got those for free. A lot of what I filled it with was some topsoil that I had around, you know, that I'd been, had kind of kept my eye on. And also I make my own uh, compost out of uh, chicken, you know, this cleaning out the chicken pen. Uh, I've found a source of uh, shredded uh, paper from an accountant that ended up being like 15 garbage bags full of it. So I've been layering that in with my compost. But the compost I used from these was compost that I used, that I, that I built up over last year. And this compost here that I've got built up will be ready for next spring. Why paper? It's just a, a product that'll break down. You know, it's just, it's just another item that you can add in there besides grass or hay or whatever that you get that just builds volume. And it allows uh, the, the chicken manure, adds nitrogen to the mix so it aids in helping things break down uh, it's really turned out to be pretty a pretty rich uh, way to make good uh, topsoil uh, there's worms in there some of the biggest ones i've ever seen here come here let's look at it. i mean just right right up close to the top of the ground it's oh my just, gosh it's just full of worms so the worms are also making what's called uh, worm castings. 
So they, they go through this pile. They also eat some of the organic material and their waste is also extremely desirable for gardening. And plus they aerate, aerate the ground so it's all just real light and loose and this is not old. Look at the size of that one. It's like a little snake. Yeah. But so the benefit there is if you go fishing you get free worms. <laughs> right. Let's take a look at uh, what this, uh, what you have on the ground, and then walk us through uh, what's going on with the raised bed further, further along. Well, these areas right here, this is actually where my old compost bed was, and I just took what was left after laying all the the garden out, and just kind of smoothed it out and mixed some other stuff in with it, and uh, and just made it into a bed, and I just scattered lettuce on it. So you see real small lettuce um, starting to emerge out of there. Okay. Just for another round of lettuce. Uh, this little strip right here, I'm gonna plant some zucchinis in. Uh, I just kinda roughed it out whenever I was laying the rest of it out, but I haven't planted anything in there yet. These right here, uh, were, I got the start for these plants right here from uh, from a friend of mine that lives in Florida, and she called them she called it spinach. But it's just uh, an edible green that uh, that she was growing down there, and it doesn't like freezing too well. The everything on the top of the ground froze off this year, but and and I didn't know what it was going to do. But in the spring, it came back from the roots. So hopefully, this is something I can just keep this bed going, and I'll have it every year. You can either fry them or just eat them raw in a salad. Okay. These other things that I have here that look like weeds and actually are weeds, but um, this is yellow dock root. Uh, it's used, um, the root is used in a lot of uh, salves because it kind of draws things out. Um, I make a poison ivy salve with yellow dock root and also this uh, wide leaf plantain right here and uh, jewel weed and olive oil and and beeswax and you, you steep everything off in the olive oil and then strain it off and then put it in uh, mix it with the beeswax and that makes it however stiff or loose or runny that you want it and then uh, here these are uh, these are called patty pan squash. They're they're pretty good, um, and they seems like I, all these are from just volunteers from uh, one of the one of the squash that I didn't pick last year, and it sat there all winter, and the the outside of it got as hard as I don't know what what you'd say, but it it seems like it had a shell around it. And then when I broke it open, they were already growing inside of it. So I just took and split them apart and started sticking them in the garden and actually have them in a couple of different places. This is uh, oregano that I bought, just a, like a four inch container of it a couple of years ago and uh, started raising it in uh, about a two gallon pot. But then it started like growing out around the pot, so I just started sticking it in different places. And it seems to have done extremely well in this spot. It kind of took over the spot. I really didn't want it to be that big, but um, at least it's doing good, so I know I'll have some. We, yeah. we eat it raw, just in salads, and sometimes use it for seasoning other stuff. Um, these are uh, buttercrisp lettuce. Butter crisp lettuce. I start those in a tray and then uh, split them apart and stuck them in the ground and they seem like they're doing fairly well. There's one of them that's going to seed. What do you call that? Rocket? What'd you call it? That's, uh, they, they, when it does that, they say it's bolted. Bolted? Yeah, it, when, it, when it gets um, too hot or too much sun, 
it tends to do that and all that means is it's making a seed pod it's trying to regenerate some seeds so I'm just gonna let that one go to seed and I'll collect seeds and keep planting it but this if I want to keep this through the summer I'll probably have to put like some shade cloth and build something over top of it uh, I have some more herbs over here that I I had the same stuff from started from a four inch pot and just started growing them in these pots so it gives me a little something to pinch on there's what's this one parsley and sage and there's actually a little piece of thyme that 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 kind of took it took a root right there okay and this is oregano right here and i don't know who's going to win in this pot probably one of them will take over so I'm not really worried about which one does. Whatever does the best, I'll take it. And then what do we have here? That's rosemary. Okay. And then in this uh, in this long Hugel culture bed right here, I have uh, two different kinds of peppers. There's jalapeno peppers and and uh, Hungarian wax hot banana peppers and I like both of those real well for pickling uh, in between them I threw some these are uh, radishes that I just throw in between them and as these things grow these are, have a real short growing period so hopefully by the time these get up and start shading everything out I, I'll just eat those and that the, the onions are the same way once they get up like this, I start eating them. Okay. And then further down, I put in some asparagus. Uh, this is a kind of a long-term item that you grow, so you want to make sure you got it where you want it. But these asparagus crowns that I planted, uh, these are like the second year of the asparagus root that you buy, and I put them in the ground, and it'll probably be another year before I get anything to eat out of it. But once they get going, you can you can expect them to be there for 20 years or maybe 25 years in the same spot. So, and I like it. So, I probably end up doing more of it. Maybe next year I, I may end up with this whole thing in asparagus and just building another one of these for some of the other plants. The tomato plants are some of my favorites that I grow every year. They look like they're doing really well. Yeah, they seem like they've taken a good root. It finally warmed up enough where they're happy. But these are these are sweet million cherry tomatoes. And down there I have German queens, which are a a real they grow they get a real big tomato that doesn't have a lot of mushy area inside. It's almost all meat. They're extremely good for tomato sandwiches if that's your thing. Okay. These are romas which I use uh, mostly for salsa, for canning salsa or making tomato sauce. And these are some I hadn't tried before, but they were recommended to me by Queen's Nursery where I buy a lot of this, a lot of like started plants in four packs. They said these were a Roma, but it was a giant Roma. So I told them throw one in there and I'd try it. Yeah, but so far they, the plants, are true to their name they they're bigger than the other ones and they're the same age and down here like I said these were some more of the the patty pan squash that just volunteered on their own these I didn't even plant though a couple of them I planted if they're in the row the other ones were just seeds that were scattered around and uh, there's the old piece of the, the shell of the old squash And it was just like a nice package that kept the seeds all winter, just ready to plant the next year. These are, this is some too. And some of the other squash that I've got planted around here are butternut squash. It's a winter squash that vines. So once I get, I get got to get things cleaned up a little bit to give them some room to grow. But they'll take over and you just let them go until uh, the fall. 
and then pick them and let them cure out in the sun for a couple of days and you can keep them in the basement all winter. They stay fine without any refrigeration, so I kind of like that. But that's actually about it. I got another row here that I'll probably put some put some green beans or something like that in. What about canning? Or Is any of this stuff going to make it to the canning stage? Yeah, hopefully the green beans I'll have enough extra to eat on some and to can some as well. Uh, the, the peppers... I always like jalapenos. I'm not as I'm not as uh, as big on eating them fresh as I am having them canned. And uh, the uh, Hungarian wax peppers, a lot of times I let them get ripe, which means you just you can pick them green and they're good green, but uh, if you let them go, they turn red and they get sweeter and you can dry them and then chop them and make it makes like a hot uh, paprika and uh, I can't seem to get enough of that so that's what I plan on doing with those probably. When do you start all this? What time of year usually? Uh, you know I usually try to start stuff in March so uh, it's ready for early in May to set out. If you can have plants already a foot tall like these tomatoes were probably a foot tall when I put them in there and I planted probably two-thirds of the plant underground so uh, that gives you deeper roots which makes them a little more drought resistant and uh, just starting out with a more mature plant that's already got buds on it helps you get some something a little earlier to eat on. So March you know it's still cold out here you've got a warm uh, a warmer environment that, usually, uh, yeah, I usually start on a, a seed growing, like a little heating pad, and uh, fluorescent lights, and they do fine. 24-hour lights, uh, a soluble fertilizer that's pretty high in nitrogen, and they get a real good start. And then once you are able to take them outside, you got a real healthy plant to put in the ground. And there's no uh, pesticides or fungicides, herbicides? Nothing. Uh, I mean, we saw the worms basically tells the story. Yeah, I try not to put any, well, I mean, I don't try not to. I don't. I don't use any seven dust. Um, I don't use any fungicides. I try to prune the plants down low, and that, that keeps tomatoes are bad to get blight around here. But if you, if you start out early and keep the stuff that's down low that stays wet when it rains, if you keep that pruned off, that helps not to have uh, the blight for at least longer. Sometimes you can't avoid it, but you just try to get them to go as long as they can. And then once they start getting sick, it seems like sick plants really draw, they draw up um, parasitic insects and stuff like that, that, that further eat the plant down to nothing. So my goal is high volume and try to get as much as I can while they're healthy and then just let them go or dig them out and bury them in the compost bin or something like that. So you don't really have to use pesticides. I, I never use them. Never use them on anything. Right on. Well, thanks for uh, giving me and everybody watching the tour and thanks for letting me be a part of, you know, experiencing all this stuff with you. And uh, maybe we can catch you sometime soon and have you uh, give us a tour of one of the chicken coops. Yeah, come back and visit and we'll, uh, we'll just, cause I'll be planting more stuff and, uh, as things start getting ripe, we'll have something to eat on. Sounds good. Have a good day. All right, man. Thanks.